Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're talking about the brand new Amazon Echo fourth generation smart speaker. And as you can tell here, Amazon did a total redesign on this. So I've been using this for about a week now and we have a lot to talk about. So from the previous design that was more like a cylinder, now Amazon changed it so it's completely spherical. It's spherical. <laughs> It's spherical. It's almost completely spherical. And while well, honestly, they probably should have called it the Amazon bowling ball because that's exactly what it looks like. I really kind of like it. I think it does a much better job than their previous model. And like I said, there's a lot to talk about because Amazon not only changed the shape of this, but they added a lot of really cool functions on the internals of this that we'll talk about later on in the video. But let's start off with a physical tour here of this device. Starting off on the top, you can see the entire thing is covered in fabric on the front, a little bit more than a half. And the fabric, I think, looks really nice. It's going to cover up the speakers and it feels nice. It's kind of a nice matte finish, so it doesn't matter how bright the room is. You're not going to get any kind of weird fingerprints or reflections that you might have had on the plastic. And then on the top, we have our four buttons, which are kind of integrated into the fabric. I think it looks really nice. Again, much nicer than the plastic design they had before. And so we have our volume down, our volume up buttons. We have the button to disable the microphone, which the entire ring on the bottom turns red when you do that. And then we also have our action button to summon your voice assistant, Alex. I'm just gonna say Alex in this video, but you guys know who I'm talking about. I don't wanna summon yours at home. Then looking at the back, the back is covered in a plastic that you're really not going to see because it's most likely going to be sitting against a wall or a windowsill or something like that. But on the bottom, we have our two ports. One of them is the power port, which it comes in the box, of course. And then next to that, we have our aux port, which is an aux in or out, depending on what you plug into there and how you configure it in the app. Now, looking at the bottom, you'll see the white ring is actually where your light is. So no longer is it going to be going around the top. Now it's on the bottom. That's your indicator when the mic's off, it's red. When Alex is thinking or talking to you, it's going to be that blue color. And when you change the volume, it's going to show a white ring kind of all the way around there or as far as your volume is. So like volume five, the light goes halfway around. And then a really cool touch on here, in my opinion, on the bottom, not only do we have kind of a rubbery pad to hold it on a table pretty steady, but we also have that little quarter 20 female thread in the middle, which for those of you who are not well versed in threads, that's the same threads you'll have on the bottom of cameras. You'll have it on the top of like a light stand, a tripod. And so it's a really common screw size that allows you to mount this pretty much anywhere you want. So really opens up a lot of options. I think that was a good move on Amazon's part to do that. But otherwise, there's really not a whole lot to talk about physically with this on the outside. Now on the inside, we have a three inch woofer pointing upwards. So it's hard to see here. I'll show you guys a picture that Amazon showed me. And then on the left and right side, we have the two 0.8 inch tweeters. So the sound quality is significantly different than we had on the previous Echoes, which really focused on 360 audio as they called it. So you could set it in the middle of the room and it would play in all directions pretty equally. This one is going to be more directional and I'll talk about sound later on in the video because while that might seem like a drawback, in many ways it's actually a positive. Now I mentioned before that the differences to this design are more than just what we see externally. So the speaker configuration is one of them, but also they added some really cool hardware on the inside. So now this is a hub for Zigbee, you have Bluetooth low energy, you have Amazon Sidewalk. And what that means is at least this is a big deal for me. If you have a lot of little smart devices around your home, if you have like Philips Hue light bulbs, for example. No longer do you need to get a Philips Hue hub. Instead, you can use this as a hub. So not only is that saving you money by not having to buy each individual hub, but it's also saving you space from needing those all over your house. Instead, you just have this much more aesthetically pleasing and a lot more functional as well. And then Amazon Sidewalk is kind of a newer thing Amazon's rolling out. And it's if you have sensors like on the corner of your garden or somewhere outside your house and you need a longer range, they will still communicate very well with this device. And then as far as setup goes, as with most other Echo devices, it's really easy. You just go into the Amazon Alex app on your phone and then you go to add device within maybe 30 seconds or a minute, you're able to add this. All you have to really do is give it permissions. So it's gonna ask for location. You can say no if you want, it's going to ask for a Wi-Fi. It obviously needs that. And that's pretty much it. It's really easy to set up. All right, so getting into a sound quality analysis now, I'm gonna play a sample song for you so you can see what it sounds like. But starting off with my own analysis, I, I, the first thing I wanna talk about is actually the spatial behavior of this. So now that it's not 360 audio, it's going to be more directional. And the first thing that means is that you are able to have some stereo sound, which is a slight advantage. Now, I know some people might be worried that 360 audio sounds like a better deal, but I was really thinking about it and everywhere I've ever put an echo in my house has always been 
near the wall because it obviously needs an outlet. So it's not going to be in the middle of my room with the exception of maybe if it's sitting on like an island. And for me, it's usually on side tables and, and things like that. So the, the projection is really not a bad thing. I found that when you're right in front of it, it's obviously going to sound best, but you probably have about a 120 degree cone where the sound really doesn't sound any different. So if it's against a wall, most of your room is going to sound pretty much the same. Once you get past 120 degrees, it doesn't really sound that different other than the fact that you're just going to have a higher level of bass in comparison to the rest of the sound. So it's going to be a little bass heavy and you could even turn this around like 180 degrees and the sound still, it still sounds pretty good. But again, you're just going to have a little bit more bass. That's just the nature of how sound works. Uh, you're going to have lower frequencies diffracting a little bit differently and spreading throughout your home. Now, I found that as far as the spatial, like moving around your home, it fills up the room really well. It sounds pretty balanced anywhere I go in the room. And so I think it does a great job of that. The, the three inch woofer on there really adds a lot of bass. And I think it was, it was pretty warm, pretty full. And for a hundred dollar smart speaker, I was definitely very impressed. Now the Amazon Echo here is supposed to use its own microphone to listen to the audio quality and kind of adapt to EQ it for the environment it's in. I don't have enough rooms in my house to really test that out and find any significant differences. So like I said, the bass is pretty warm and full. It tends to fill the room really well and it does get really loud. The bass is on the side of boomy as opposed to punchy and at times it can sound slightly muddy, but again, it's a hundred dollar smart speaker. So it's gonna sound pretty much as good as you would expect it to for that. The highs also slightly eclipse some of the higher vocals at times, but of course that depends on the song and the, the room that you're in. So overall, I found that the sound quality in this was definitely very impressive. For hundred dollars, I really couldn't ask for a whole lot more out of this. It gets loud, it has a good bass, and it sounds like a really nice natural balance. <laughs> And that's half volume. So the good thing is if the audio quality or volume does not meet your needs, you can always plug in other speakers by the aux port on the back or with the Bluetooth. So definitely nice to have that. And talking about some more internal features of this, this does have, it should be a little bit quicker with the new AZ1 neural processor. Neural's like, neural processor has got to be like the biggest buzzword out there. But essentially what that means is it's going to be a little bit more localized when it's doing things processing on board. And so not only is the microphone excellent quality, I've tested, you know, yelling Alex from other rooms and it hears me every single time, but it's also definitely reacting fairly quickly, at least quicker than I saw with like my Google Nest Mini. So that's definitely a good sign right there. So while the Amazon Echo has a lot of really positive and promising features on board, there are a couple cons you want to be aware of. The first one is that you won't be able to mount this on the wall, obviously. That's something that the Amazon Echoes never could do, but also the minis now, you're going to struggle with that being that they're all spherical and kind of going with the spherical concept there, it is going to take up more space. So you're going to struggle to put this on a windowsill or any kind of small ledge that you might have had an old Echo on. 
But the good thing is it does, I, in my opinion, it looks a lot better. So if you're setting this on a table, it's going to you know, definitely fit in a little better than the old ones, especially with the fabric coat covering there and the different colors. And on top of that, another drawback is without the 360 audio, it might not be the best pick for like the middle of your room. If you have an island with an outlet, maybe this is not the best pick for that. But if you put it along the edge, I think this is an advantage to have that directional audio. The other drawbacks I noticed really in comparison to like the Google Homes and Nest Minis, the first one is that you can't use conjunctions. So on Google Assistant, I really like saying, uh, turn the volume down and play a song, or you can, multi you can add a couple things on there. This, it's going to be one at a time. So you say, Alex, tell her what you want it to do. And then you have to say it again and tell her what the next thing you want to do is. And the other thing is it doesn't have a play pause button on the top. It has four buttons. I really wish you could remap one of them. Maybe you can. I didn't really dig into it that far to figure out how that would happen. I just wish it was easier to like silence uh, alarms and plot pause music or play music. Do stuff like that with just a single button on the top. But then of course there are some pretty big pros here. So I really like the design of this, changing things up. I think it looks a lot better. I think it sounds better. I think it does, they did a great job with overall the new concept of this. Also adding Zigbee on there, making it a hub for your Philips Hue and all the other sensors you might have. Again, really great idea on Amazon's part. And then on the bottom, that little mount, I think is going to be very useful for a lot of people. Having that quarter 20 thread on the bottom, I mean, I'm interested to see like where people mount that, what kind of third party things come out because that could be very useful. So guys, overall, what do I think of the Amazon Echo fourth generation? I think it's really easy to recommend for $100. Like it's a great buy, but if you're looking for more of a budget, you might wanna consider getting the Amazon Echo Mini. I will be comparing this one to the Mini probably in my next video or maybe my previous video, but go on down and subscribe, click the bell icon and head on over to my channel so you can see that video, assuming I already released it. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.